lot of people recently have been asking me, how do I get my pictures to look the way they look? Well, generally I direct them to my YouTube channel, the one you guys are watching right now. Thank you so much. And I have quite a few tutorials up here already. Some, I, some techniques I use often, some that are pretty niche, actually some that might be very niche. But today I'm gonna to be going over a very specific technique that I use all the time dodging and burning. These are key in how edgy or how soft or how different my work may look. Before I continue, I would like to remind you guys to please subscribe and hit that bell icon. You know, with YouTube's new algorithms, subscribing just doesn't really cut it anymore. You have to hit the bell icons, otherwise you will miss a video. Dodging and burning is an age-old technique that was developed in darkroom. <laughs> no pun intended. So I'm going to show you guys using this picture here of my good friend Shelby. And as you can see, this is with the dodge and burn, my style of dodge and burn off. This is with it on, off, and on. Now the dodge and burn, depending on how you really want to do it, can enhance the lighting and the shadows to give you a much sharper and edgier look, or just completely change up the entire tone of the picture altogether just all together. I'm gonna create a new layer using Control J or you can just right click it and duplicate your layer. I prefer the shortcuts. And then you can go over to this tool right here. It looks like a little magnifying glass. And just gonna press and hold it and you get your dodge, your burn, and your sponge tool. Now we're just gonna be going over these two, the dodge and the burn. Good thing to remember, burn, darkens, dodge, lightens. Simple. Burn darkens, dodge lightens. Now where I generally like to use my dodging tool is right here in the eyes. Simply because if you shoot a photograph of a model and her eyes become dark because you didn't you know, really light them properly or whatever reason. Personally, I like her darker eyes in this image, but eyes do have a lighter tone as well that you can see in this image here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my duplicated layer and I'm actually gonna use this as no, I, don't, I can use this as my base layer so I'm gonna take my duplicated layer here and I'm just gonna take my dodging tool and lighten up her eyes is becoming a clear difference in the details that are now available in her eyes. See, it went from here to here. That's just with a simple dodge. Now for some people this might be too much. Like for me, this is it's a little too much because it pulls too much focus on the eyes and takes away from the rest of the image. So personally, I would dial, dial this down just so it blends a little bit better. Like so. And then probably darken this one up. So because I still have my base layer, which has not been altered, I can create a layer mask. This little button here. Clicking my brush tool. And if you see my other videos, I generally set my opacity to 10. I don't like to erase at all. It's destructive editing. Personally, I prefer non-destructive. Just because you can always go back. And boom. Because her eye is kind of like in this shadow here, I kind of want to bring this down a little bit more. There. It's a little bit better. Now that's generally how I tend to use the dodge tool. And that's usually the only way I use my dodge tool. If I want to enhance my highlights, what I'll do is my highlights. I have another way I generally like to do this. And that's with just creating a blink layer like so, and just doing like I showed you earlier. Now this is really, really just super simple. You're just gonna create a blink layer here with this little icon. I'm gonna click that. And we're just gonna use our black and white colors. Now what's good about this method is if the black and white generally doesn't work, 
you can always use colors to achieve a similar result. Whereas if the black is too dark or and you just want to use a darker brown, you can do that. Or a lighter brown, you can do that. It just depends on the feel you want to go for for your image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the black and white for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deepen all of these shadows. All these real dark shadows the here. In my mouth, the collarbones. And her jaw and her cheekbone right now is here. I want to deepen these up. I'm going to increase my brush size by holding Alt and using the right click button. Moving it left to right, as you can see, increases its diameter. Up and down increases its hardness or its feather. So I want to keep my hardness at zero. Bring my diameter down to about 400. Depending on your image, this will change since this is a relatively large image. This is pretty much raw straight from the camera. So it's gonna be a little bit bigger rather than if you're just using a um, you know, stock image or what have you. So I'm already at 10% opacity, good. Now I'm using my X key to switch from white to black or from my foreground to my background color. I generally like to start with my shadows because my highlights are usually where I like them to be when I first shoot the image. And I'm just gonna kind of paint in these shadows. I noticed these are relatively dark and that's because it's still on the normal blend mode. And I'm gonna take this and choose soft light. Now when I hit soft light, see, it blends a lot better versus when it's on normal. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these shadows. So I went from here to here. Now this right here is actually a bit much for me. I kind of overdid it. I'm gonna undo that a little bit by using the white. Just kind of clicking in. There. That's better. That's a lot better. I see I kind of overdid it here, so I'm actually gonna layer mask this. Change my opacity to 100. Now, normally you would come up here and just do it this way, but I have a the Razer gaming mouse, so I have little buttons on the side that just allow me to just hit it and it changes it for me. Bring that back in. really well, this is kind of getting to where I want it to be I kind of want to brighten this up a little bit so I'm gonna create a new layer and color sample from a lighter skin tone now this is where using colors for this dodge and burn method comes in here because if I had to use white as you can see, it just kind of appears ashy, almost. You know, it really doesn't get rid of the darkness in, in this part of her skin, the slight discoloration. Get rid of that. I'm just gonna kind of color in over it. Let's set up the soft light. Let's see. I I believe I'm actually gonna leave, and actually I believe I'm going to leave this on normal. So yeah, I'm actually gonna leave this on lighten. Perfect. And if it doesn't blend right, you can always kind of bring it down just a little bit. And there we have it. That's how I get my real edgy looks by using the dodge and burn methods in Photoshop. Please like, comment, subscribe, scribble. You know what I'm saying? Hit the little bell icon so you can get notified whenever I post a new video. If you wanna see the rest of my content, the rest of my tutorials, please check it out right here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.
Six, three.